Hi YouTube, this video is about the overwinter internal conditions in a typical coach built motorhome or caravan in the UK. Owners employ various methods of controlling the environment of the internal space involving heating, dehumidification, combinations of both or just natural ventilation. As far as I know, there have been no studies into the effectiveness of these methods. So in this video, as a heating and ventilation engineer, I've tried to introduce some science into how effective these different methods actually are and whether they are worthwhile or not. The test involved charting the internal temperature and humidity over a number of weeks, 29 days to be precise, and seeing what effect the different options have on the internal humidity levels. So the dehumidifiers on test are this little chemical dehumidifier, a small electrical dehumidifier, and a picture there of a larger unit, uh, an EBAC unit. The chemical dehumidifiers, uh, there's two types. Uh, there's the Unibond and there's also a uh, Damp Clear. And there's a number of others um, that people use, including cat litters and salt in a tray. And But anyway, these chemical units are supposed to serve areas up to 20 square meters. So it says on the box. And this motorhome is approximately five meters long internally by two meters wide. So the floor area is 10 square meters. There are two areas of concern for the leisure vehicle owner during winter storage. Uh, one is damage caused by condensation, occurrence of mould, dampness, mustiness and water damage. The other is uh, damage caused by frost to the onboard water systems, uh, i.e. if it freezes up and damage the pumps, pipes etc. The construction of most coach-built motorhomes, compared to panel vans or uh, canal boats even, leaves a lot to be desired with respect to air tightness. There's all sorts of gaps in the construction. There's purpose-made vents in the uh, cupboards and lockers, especially around the boiler, but um, generally around the floor, perimeter of the floor. The roof lights, they don't seal unless you fit them with special kits. That's an MPK, but even the heckies uh, don't, don't come with seals normally. The fridges, typically they're poorly sealed. They allow drafts all around the perimeter. And uh, this is a Ducato cab, and the cab area is like a colander. The dashboard, um, you've got vents in there that you can close, but usually they're open. Uh, there's holes in the battery compartment. So the battery's under the floor there, but you can see daylight through the battery compartment. So there's air comes up around the mats. There's holes in the doors, so the doors are ventilated. And it depends how tightly the door cards are fitted, but there's air comes through there. And there's some massive holes that I've found, which I don't think is unusual to this vehicle, but where the um, caravan body meets the Ducato cab floor 
there's uh, large holes on both sides. And when I say large, I'm talking about sort of 100 millimetres square, something like that. So with all these gaps, it goes without saying that there will be a relatively large amount of outside air entering the space. This is measured in air changes per hour. A large air change rate is not necessarily a bad thing from the point of view of keeping the leisure vehicle ventilated, as it will keep everything aired and mould free, assuming that all the cupboards and lockers are left open. So you can see these wedged open there. And the lockers are open. A large air change rate is a bad thing, however, if you're trying to dehumidify the internal space, as you are trying to dehumidify all the infiltrated air as well. These are the figures for infiltration rates in buildings. So I've used this one air change rate per hour. Uh, coming under a leaky building heading but that's in still air conditions so when it's windy outside you can expect that air change rate to go up this is the equipment I've been using it's a small uh, Bluetooth temperature and humidity data logger I actually checked it against some other equipment I had and it it checked out okay and uh, this is the um, 29 days of uh, data I've collected. So what can we make of this data we collected? Well on the charts, um, this is showing humidity. So we've got 100% humidity there, 80%, 60%. So left to its own devices, the internal conditions are just bumping along between 80 and 60 percent. These blips are when I've been in and had the heating on so the temperature goes up, the humidity goes down. So from the chart here we can see that the humidity level inside the motorhome basically isn't affected by any of this equipment which is collecting various degrees of water the um, unibond unit collected about half an inch of blue water in 11 days the mini electric dehumidifier collected about an inch and a half of water in six days but none of these affected the humidity levels inside the motorhome until we get to the EBAC unit which is a large unit and it made a big difference to the humidity so in four days it collected actually um, around about three litres of water and you can see the when I switch the unit on there the corresponding drop in the humidity inside the vehicle so yeah that made a big difference this is the largest dehumidifier on test and it's been running for five days now and pull the humidity levels down to a little bit less than 60 percent it's pulling 280 watts of power and it's collected a tank full of water. I'm just emptying the dehumidifier's tank now. This is five days worth of water it's collected. Quite a bit. So concluding this, we look at the uh, effects of the chemical unit, uh, it doesn't have a fan, it just absorbs the water from the surrounding air, 
which is immediately being replaced by a never-ending stream of damp air from outside via the natural air change rate. The small dehumidifier has a fan and collected more water but cannot reduce the humidity within the space because it isn't big enough to offset the infiltration rate of outside air. The large dehumidifier has enough capacity, it's actually equivalent to 10 air changes an hour within the space, and it can handle the typical infiltration rates and effectively reduces the humidity levels from around uh, nearly 80% to around 60%. So just summing up here, unless you're going to use a large dehumidifier uh, with the associated um, power it's consuming, uh, this one was 280 watts, trying to dehumidify the inside of the motor or more caravan by these other methods, it's a complete waste of time and money. All I do is I leave all the cupboards and lockers open to avoid uh, damp and mould. And during the coldest periods, I leave a little fan heater set at around 4 degrees C to avoid frost damage to the water system. And this is what I've been doing for years. It's uh, my tried and tested solution. Thanks for listening, guys.